please consider subscribing. All right, CPDH players, the time has come. This last week, this amazing thing that you see before you, uh, cpdh.guide was officially announced on the PDH Pod podcast, and it was spoiled by none other than a couple of pals, uh, Chev from the Hex Drinkers and Corey from the Dark Confidants. And they spoke a little bit. If you've, if you follow that podcast, then you already know some of the features that uh, you're going to be experiencing today in this video. But uh, now that the cat is out of the bag, I wanted to talk about a few things. I'm on a new bouncy ball, so I gotta, I gotta watch myself. So now that the cat is out of the bag, it's time to talk about the damn thing, right? So this is CPDH guide. Uh, it's meant to be the one all catch all source for everything uh, competitive popper commander. And if I'm smiling a little bit, it's the collaborative work of uh, a few people within the community. And quite frankly, yeah, it's taken a little effort to get here and we're only improving every single day. So right now you're looking at uh, an open beta version of the, uh, of the website. Now we're already working behind the scenes to uh, make the new and improved offering uh, coming soon. So just wanted to cover a couple of features. Of course, you got the, uh, the landing page here. Uh, there's a deck list database tab, um, kind of talks about what it is. Uh, you can browse the deck list database from here. All of that is embedded from uh, Budget Brews right here. Or you can submit to the database from here. I know, it's pretty awesome. Or, I'm not gonna press the button because it'll launch another, uh, the YouTube video. Uh, this will launch the video that introduces all of the committee members who have graciously volunteered their time to be part of this uh, DDB selection committee. Um, it's not an easy and or fun thing to do. We get immense enjoyment from interacting with the, uh, the, the submitters, the brewers. Uh, that's about all the fun that we have, you know, is interacting with you. The rest of it, all that admin stuff is poopy, but it's a service. Uh, this kind of tells you who we are and how we came to be and that sort of thing. Uh, I'll get to the resource. Eh, let's, let's do resources now. So on the resources tab, I have reached out to a number of creators uh, who are producing, maybe not exclusively uh, competitive popper commander content, but are producing a, uh, a percentage thereof. Uh, they're coming up on the next, on the next line. First, uh, there's the pdhrec.com uh, project uh, being, being created by Origami Master. Uh, I'm working with them to kind of get some web development stuff going on. But for right now, every single, like the latest offering that they have available is available through this link. And essentially you can, they've got a script that's querying every PDH deck list on the, uh, on Moxfield right, right now, as of this recording. And essentially right now it's collecting um, basically the cards from that, uh, it's comparing the cards from those individual commander deck lists and ranking them There's a ranking series. So it's a, a very early, uh, like EDH rec clone. So that's what PDH rec is doing right now. This next item scroll rack. I worked personally with the, uh, the author of this, uh, this website, web app, uh, to add, they were already scraping uh, budget brews for uh, CEDH offerings, and I was like, "Hey, brah, you know, why don't we, uh, why don't we do a first? And since we're already on budget brews, why don't you just scrub and, you know, we'll do that." Uh, Scroll rack is intended to be at this point in time. There's there's more features incoming, but at this time, scroll rack is meant to be a uh, new user. Like, hey. I don't know what to play and I don't know what's available. So essentially I want to play these colors. I want to play this archetype. What is out there on the database that meets those criteria? And it'll give you back some examples. 
Obviously, the larger the database gets, the more comprehensive the database gets, the more offerings will show up in this in this tool. So very excited about this collaboration. Uh, we're going to go big places in the future. Uh, this bouncy ball, I'm telling you. Um, yoga ball for those who, you know, one of those gray, yeah. Anyway, obviously, uh, we can't... Uh, we can't go any further without recognizing our uh, our overlords, the uh, the PDH home base. Uh, this link right here takes you directly to the rule set. Uh, we are the only format that I can think of that uh, has a casual player base and a competitive player base that actively seeks to not legislate, represent. That's a better word. Cavort potentially represent everyone under the pdh umbrella so why not like hey you know hail to the overlords so that's the top row now we're getting down into some creators uh obviously if you if you heard about this first this last week you heard of the x hex rinkers and this is a link uh a little birdie says that uh they have a lot more competitive popper commander you know, forthcoming, like content forthcoming. So this might be the spot where you kind of get access to that. I mean, outside of their website, because that's where this link's about it. I don't want to take full credit, but yeah. So Hex Drinkers, obviously uh, the knucklehead. Uh, Puzzle Box, if you, um, if you follow any of the Try Hard stuff, you've seen uh, Puzzle Box on there, Dallas. He's one of our uh, moderators in, in server. Uh, super awesome dude, super great content. You know, getting it. We're getting it going. Moving down to the the final final row as of now. Possibility storm, right? So Islane is a typically a CEDH creator that um, kind of got wind of like like most CEDH folks got got wind of CPDH and was like, hey, let's try this thing, right? Tried the thing. They started making a you know series of videos. In fact, uh, this month forthcoming, uh, at the time of this recording, uh, they've got two pods in this month coming up, uh, working with local people, just spreading the good word on the format. Uh, the last thing here, the year at here, is just a, a plug. You know, if you want to that point, if you are producing CPDH content and you are able to filter that or tag that or what have you, send me a link. We'll add you here. We'll add you here. That's it's it's no problem. We'll add you right here. My goal with this website is to get all of the things accessible to all of the people. CPDH is a first and foremost a community format. This is a, a community uh, community venue, com community uh, forum, community. Yes, 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 community. So anyway, speaking of forums, everybody's familiar with uh, Reddit. Most people didn't know that there was a CPDH subreddit. It's been around, well, it's been around for a while. Uh, really didn't start to uh, gain traction or have any postings or anything like that, uh, except for the last year. Um, basically started out with uh, zero followers, and then we've grown it. It's almost 200 at the time of this recording. So, right. There's the resources. I am reaching out and collaborating with uh, content creators all over the place. I'm trying to expand this. I'm trying to make this maybe not comp comprehensive because that would be uh, that would be difficult. Everybody's um, every day. There's new creators creating on this. Thank God, creating content for CPDH. Uh, and if they're willing, if they're uh, wanting to be involved in this project, I have a space for you. Okay. <clears throat> that is the uh, the highlight overview of uh, some of the functions of the website. Now, to the things that uh, everybody's interested in. Okay, so this is uh, this video is being made at the uh, on the first of September, twenty twenty two. As of yesterday, we had a hundred and two games, one hundred two games recorded in a year uh, for CPDH. Now. The vast majority, I would say, uh, 60 of those games has happened in the last two months. So it was a slow trickle, slow trickle, 
And then all of a sudden, now granted, there was a there was a bunch of games prior to this July uh, that went unlogged, unreg because we weren't uh, collecting data at the time. Uh, the first thirty games were basically games that were uh, uh, in video archives. I basically scrubbed the internet for uh, all the games that I knew about that were posted in YouTube and recorded those first thirty games over that uh, first year period. And then starting July. We started up a league and server, and then, boom, games happening all the time. So, at the time of this recording, 102 games. Uh, we're going to go over, basically, the high points of what's represented here. There's a lot more analysis uh, that can be done. That's a future video, uh, so stay tuned. This one right here is just a, hey, here's this tool. It's available to the public. There's no, there's no hidden anything. We're not playing with the numbers. We're not, we're not juicing the numbers, you know, that kind of stuff. In fact, to prove that right here, oops, right here by my head, you can download all the data. It's a, it's a spreadsheet. You can download it right there. If you, if you want to do your own analysis, nothing hidden. Every last thing that's reported in this here website is listed in that data right there. Full transparency. We're not hiding anything, 102 games as of today. Let's take a look. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna click on this link here and it's gonna be an embedded, so it's gonna take a second to reach back to uh, Google. So this is what it looks like. This is what the back end, uh, the data that you would download, this is exactly what it looks like. And keep going, keep going, 102, boom. So, you can see the tabs across the top of some of the things that we're tracking in the background. We're looking at uh, obviously player order winner, which is one of the first things we're gonna talk about in the graphs. Uh, color combos, which no analysis is really being done on the website for that. Basically because what we're doing for both, uh, both color, uh, for color combos and meta color, um, I feel like that those processes could be uh, not automated, but uh, better calculated to where uh, we can fill out this first sheet here and then everything else would be pretty much auto-generated, auto-populated, which uh, makes for better graphs on web pages, that sort of thing. That's some, some back-end stuff that we're uh, work, working on and those two, the color-related analysis uh, is kind of lacking at the moment. So we don't wanna uh, uh, put that in a customer-facing thing. Uh, you will see data from uh, the player commander win percentage, and I don't think you're going to see anything from <clears throat> commander archetype rep, uh, which, let's take a trip. It's my party. Let's take a trip. All right, let's go down to, uh, uh, for commander. So you're going to see this here. So archetype representation, but see in this tab, you're going to see every single commander down the left-hand side. So all that data from uh, the first page is collated and sorted, and you can see how many times that specific commander has been played. Zada, 14 times. So we have 14 games with Zada in the pod. We have three with Viral Drake you know, and Toruwaki the Younger. So where that becomes important is as we're starting to look at... Um, commander win percentage and stuff like that, you're gonna see decks that have a uh, 100% win rate. Well, it's a little bit of a, a misnomer because uh, they basically won the only time they were played. So you gotta, you gotta be careful with data. Oh, so yeah, boop, uh, disclaimer time. At no point in time uh, will myself or anyone else representing this data here say that this is comprehensive, that this is all inclusive, that this is all in knowing. No, um, there might be some predictive elements to this data. And I'll talk about that as we uh, move to the other pages, the other graphs, but let's, let's face it. Uh, no data is perfect because it's based on inputs. And if you've heard the saying, you know, bullshit in bullshit out, well, this is basically tattletelling on our, I don't want to say my meta, but our meta 
at the moment. So this is a direct reflection of the things that we're doing, the good habits, the bad habits, the no habits, all of that stuff. This data is reflective of that until we start getting more uh, external data coming soon. Until we start getting more external data to our meta, we can't really start getting overarching meta data. So um, it's in the future, but for right now, this is just telling on us. So if we're doing bad things, this is letting you know that we're doing bad things. If we're doing good things, this is letting you know that we're doing good things as well. So not predictive, just merely a reflection, right? So uh, let's get into the going back to the original page. So show me some damn graphs, right? So we're going to open up this metagame stats. Now, all of this is being powered by the, uh, uh, the spreadsheet data. I'm basically uh, uh, embedding this information uh, from a Google Sheets backend. So a little story about uh, player wins and win percentage by like seat position, right? When I first started writing this data down, so the first 30 games, so all those recorded games that I was going back and scrubbing the data for, uh, it told a story. Uh, the third place player had a 4% win percentage, like a win rate, right? So whoever sat in the, the, the early joke was like, oh no, I'm, in, I'm player three, I'm not going to win this one. And we all thought, hey, Anomaly, it's going to even itself out and all that stuff. And over a million games, probably it will. But like at 102 games, right? At 102 games, the Anomaly somewhat persists. So as we go around the wheel, you see in that top uh, right position, that's seat number one, 31 games. Seat number two, 30 games. Pretty even, right? Then we get around to that seat number three, 18 games, only 17.6% win percentage, followed by 22.5% in seat four. So even at 102 games, there's still something anomalous about sitting in that uh, third seat. Now, as we get more deep into uh, data collection as we get to the 200th game, 300th game. If this persists, we're already queued in to the fact that this is this is happening. So we're going to start looking for additional indicators like uh, fast opening hands for you know you know first first two seats. Uh, are the combo decks in the first two seats? Uh, are they ramping hard? Like like all of these things we're looking for. You know or will be looking for moving forward, uh, trying to figure out what the, what the deal is with this seat number three. But just future pods, if you're in seat number three, don't worry, you still got a shot. Okay, so meta archetype breakdown. So it's actually nice because this uh, has actually just been readjusted because it was a little bit of a Wild West situation. We were kind of going through a nomenclature debate on what we're calling the various uh, archetypes. So this, there were, the slices on this pie were so, infinitely smaller. The, uh, the readjustment has done wonders to make this more uh, uh, comprehensible. So you can see, save my screens over here. So uh, you can see like, okay, we have Voltron aggro, aggro combo, uh, mid range, Voltron control, uh, control, combo Voltron, um, combo control, like all of these different archetypes. And the way that we're doing it is we've established that uh, very few combo decks are straight combo. Like there's there's one that I can think of right off the top of the uh, top of my head, uh, Dargo Keskit, uh, that plays very little interaction, very little control elements, right? So it's probably more of a straight combo deck than a combo control deck. Uh, although now I'm looking in the, re the readjustment, it's combo is represented at 32.8%. Either way, uh, I might be a little, cause I have, uh, there's, there's a team of people. I'm just the guy with the face and doing the dumb stuff on the internet, right? So we have a team of people working the data behind the scenes uh, who are going through and trying to code these decks which are available for you to view, code these decks by an appropriate archetype. 
And this right here is when I was telling you about tattletelling, right? This right here is telling you not what we're doing, but what we did, right? So we're looking at this and like, ooh, man, Clay, you're almost at 33% combo. Like, I thought you guys hated combo. Well, we, it's not that we hate combo, right? It's just that we were adverse to uh, propositions that the meta was solely combo, right? So we started fleshing out mid-range, uh, combo control Voltron. We tried, to, uh, we tried to diversify the meta, and some of those efforts are reflected here, uh, and everything here is basically representative of its representation in the meta. If people want to play XYZ, XYZ is going to show up here. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful on what you're, you can't extrapolate that the, the full open meta looks exactly like this because that's not the case. We know it's not the case. Uh, but by chance, if you wanted to, now that I'm thinking about it, if you wanted to build a deck and you wanted to actually game our meta, this is what we're doing or have done right so if we've been doing this and you're like hmm i see a weakness right and you brew a list that's a anti-meta deck this would be the resource so just always be careful with the, the predictive nature of data right okay so this one right here so this is representation so this tells you what decks are being played what archetypes are being played this tells you what archetypes are winning. So uh, I have this uh, in a hover over feature so that way it uh, highlights. So if you want a better than 25% chance of winning in our meta at, you know, historically, uh, you wanna play either combo or mid range. Now, of course we have all of these other nice little things that you can hover over. So like I said, this is an indicative of future wins. This is telling you what has won. And once again, if you want to sharpshoot the meta and make an anti-meta deck, this would be the data that you would use. So this is telling you that, uh, this is also telling you where we're focused. So I, I, I'm hesitant to say so, but it's probably true. Uh, we're the largest online CPDH meta that I know of. Uh, we're constantly brewing new things. Uh, nothing is off the table. We don't say no uh, with regard to uh, what people are willing to try. Now, uh, if, we, if we've tried it, like, because we're always brewing, right? And we get new people in, they're like, hey, what about this one card? And it's like, well, we've already tried it. Now, that said, just because a couple of us have tried it, we're still not going to say no, right? We're going to say Good luck, you know, bring it to the table. Let's go. It's it's not about anybody that's judging your efforts based on concept alone, right? No. Battlefield. Results, baby. If you're putting up those results, if you're a skilled player doing skilled things with magic cards, boom, battlefield, baby. So don't don't let people tell you conceptually that your ideas are bad. We can walk through like choices and stuff like that, and there might be some wiggle room there. But if you're if you're diehard trying to get something to work, like go for it, do the damn thing, right? Okay. Speaking of uh, making things work, okay. So that listing that I showed you earlier that had all the commanders. So every single commander uh, here. Oh, uh, that's uh, no. This is every single uh, winning commander. Excuse me. So this is this is every single winning commander. Uh, weighed against their wins. So uh, Abdel has a 50% win rate. Oh, Abdel AIT has a 50% win rate. It's been played twice. So it has won one of two games. So remember I was telling you earlier about certain decks like uh, uh, Abdel Sword Coast. Okay, so you got to understand something. So this is, this is something, uh, this is knowing something outside of the data. So Abdel Sword Coast Sailor, uh, I'm here to testify, preach, right, is one of the most dynamic, always on combo decks. You cannot turn your eyes away from this deck. It, it wins out of nowhere 
every single turn. So it's been played a number of times. Abdel has been explored quite extensively. It's been played a number of times. And as you can see, uh, it doesn't have a win percentage. <laughs> so it has lost. So if you go by these metrics, this would be like, oh man, that Abdel hasn't, uh, hasn't won out of 11 games. Um, there's a reason for that. And when you see Abdel across from you and that first time they go, Cloud Shift? As soon as you see that, you recognize the raw power of that deck. And by and, by and large, what people are doing are using their removal and they're using their combat, right? So that's how they're getting rid of this combo player. Now, Abdel is a tremendously badass deck. This is not representative of how badass it is. Okay, so moving down, like I said, this is all of the winning commanders who have a win uh, and it's tallied of how many games they've played. So Abdel has to have won at one, at least, ah, there it is. I couldn't, I couldn't hover over it. Uh, can he, uh, there you go. Less than 1%. There you go. Yeah. So I was like, man, Hmm. So anyway, these are the four pieces of data that we're uh, projecting out to the public right now. Uh, like I said, uh, the, the raw data itself has other items. In fact, let's go to that real quick. Uh, browse. Oh, there was one more thing. There was a uh, number of turns, but we'll be able to show you that. So see this charts graph that uh, is highlighting up at the top, Oop. up at the top, up there, right there. Yep. So you'll see, here's all the back end graphs. So the last one that I wanted to, to highlight, and I had it originally as this, uh, this wavy graph and uh, puzzles like, nah, dude, that looks like continuous. So we got to do scatter plot. So uh, let me go to that. Recording live. It's awesome. There we go. So the trend line is auto generated. So where this is important. So for the longest time, uh, the number of turns in a game was hovering at 12. So the very first game that I have recorded on this data is the um, playing with power video, the infamous playing with power video from last year, from 2020, 21, 2021, and it was 20 turns. Ever since then, it has been ticking down, ticking down, ticking down, ticking down. Now, uh, in a future video, I'm going to talk about from month to month because I have those delineated and all that stuff. But right now, you can see that trend line. We're trending down. We've introduced aggro into the, uh, into the meta. So we have options now. It's not just combo. It's not just control. You know, it's not just mid-range. We have, we have aggro to worry about, whether or not that's uh, Sir Conrad Rats, whether or not that is... Uh, geez, Zada has been doing, they, they just refurbished Zada. So Zada has been doing really well, although that's kind of a combo deck, but still like, uh, combat damage in CPDH is real, is it's existing. And right now I can tell you without even looking because I looked at it earlier, uh, today, uh, the average number of turns is starting to tick down below 12 it's at 11.8 for the entirety of the data. So that's over a year's worth of games, 102 games, 11.8 turns. What does that tell you? If you're a control deck, you're trying to buy time, right? Buy time. You're trying to push it beyond 12. If you're an aggro deck, you better be, you better be humping by turn eight or you're going to get uh, phased out by those uh, combo control decks mid-range decks, right? So this is where the data helps. It lets you know where you need to be at with your build. If you're building a 20 turn deck, um, Baleful Strix, you're gonna be hard pressed, bro. You know, so yeah, this is the website by all means, uh, cpdh.guide. Uh, we're open for business. So stop on by. Uh, I need to add an email thing here, but yeah, 
Uh, if you have any, uh, there you go. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, comments, questions, and concerns, uh, drop it in the comments below. This is a service that myself and other people want to provide for you. This is for the community. We want to make this community be the best, or not make it, allow, help, assist. You know, it's, it's your effort. We're just going to be here for you. We're going to support. There you go. We're going to make this, uh, help make this, uh, uh, this meta, this large meta, CPDH meta project. We're going to help it blossom, help it shine. You know, anything you want to do. Okay. There it is, folks. I'll see you on the battlefield. Oh, 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 oh.